we're back here in the data center with John Busser, one of our business transformation center engineers for HPE. Absolutely. And what are you going to talk to us about today? Well, I want to talk about managing on-prem hardware with a cloud-like perspective, because certainly the cloud is an experience and not necessarily a destination. And HPE can actually bring that, that experience to on-prem solutions. So for those customers who like the concept of cloud, uh, ease of management, the kind of not necessarily tied to a location, but have a need for on-premises equipment, uh, whether that's a performance or a security issue, whatever that may be, now they can have that experience with on-premises equipment. Absolutely. And, and HP is really the only organization that can, brings this cloud experience across stacks. So they not only deal with the cost model, but they also deal with the day-to-day -day maintenance you know, making wireless networks, creating volumes, updating servers, right, from with the cloud. So across server stores as well as networking, like I had mentioned, across cost too. So benefits of cloud as well as benefits on-prem. So uh, it sounded like you wanted to show us what that looks like. Let's go take a look. I'd love to. Come on. All right. All right, John. So uh, we were talking about in the data center, you're talking about GreenLake, and that's what you want to show us now. Yeah, this is GreenLake, uh, the GreenLake platform. Um, and this is the basic tiles that people kind of look at. And I'm going to kind of talk about what these tiles are. So there's a traditional model that people think of with GreenLake, and that's the cost model. Mm -hmm. Pay for what you utilize on a monthly basis type of thing. So in the case of storage, if you have 50 terabytes, but you only use 40 terabytes, Right, you only pay for 40 terabytes on an ongoing basis. The, the, the tools that I use to be able to manage that are, or manage capacity as well as cost, that's within GreenLake Central. But okay. that's one aspect of managing with a cloud-like perspective. There's also the day-to-day -day maintenance. And that's what we see over here with these other tiles. So Aruba Central, um, that allows us to create wireless networks, manage switches, as well as gateways. Um, the Data Services Cloud Council allows us to be able to go in and create volumes up front. And even now, create backup strategies related around that. And Compute Ops Management allows us to be able to manage on-prem client servers from in the cloud. You know, do things like firmware updates and things like this. And keep in mind, this could be a single site. These could be sites all across the globe. And they're ever expanding these solutions that are out there. So for example, if I launch the Data Services Cloud Console, you'll see we have a variety of things that are in here as well. So things that have to deal with creating the volumes, Cloud physics allows us to be able to size our environments to make sure we're sized correctly. And backup and recovery allows us to create backup jobs that are from within the cloud. So this, these backup jobs are really resilient to ransomware and things like that. So you can leverage on-prem snapshots. Um, it'll deploy an on-prem repository if you want to. It'll even use create, well, create cloud backups as well. And the cool thing about this is, you know, as you pull data out of the cloud, there's no egress fees on this as well. And a nice thing about this entire platform is this is a pick and choose type of solution, just like what you'd expect from a cloud. I don't have to, this isn't an all or nothing type of situation. This is so if if I want the, let's say the, the compute and storage, I don't necessarily have to go to that cloud payment model. Yep, absolutely. And I and I could make other choices for, for networking. It's just that I have that control capability available if I want it. Absolutely. And even when I was showing it inside the data services cloud counts with the backup recovery, you could choose that or not. Because a lot of our customers have their own solutions they want to use. I'd argue ours is a little bit nicer. But these are the capabilities that you have that. Again, the cloud is an experience. It's not a destination. Now, with this, I mean, obviously, from the, the, the green light, from a payment standpoint, uh, that's a billing program. I understand that. Uh, what of the re rest of these services do I get? What do I pay for? Do I, with certain products, get features, et cetera? Yeah, with Aruba Central, um, when you buy uh, Aruba switches and access points, you can layer that on top of. Uh, the Data Services Cloud Console kind of comes as a subscription with with your Electro arrays and stuff and those type of solutions. Compute Ops Management is something you can layer on to the solution. But even with the Data Services Cloud Console, again, you're going to get that with an Electro array. You're going to need to maintain that. But you could add on the backup and recovery service if you wanted to, um, you know, to increase your, your availability or create that resilient environment. So if that's my management console, like you said, for, for Electra, uh, then I have th those pieces. And then if I want additional functionality, those are paid services that aren't part of the standard maintenance. Yeah, and this 
isn't the end of this as well. I come in here all the time, they're adding new features and functionality. It's not like a piece of software you install on your PC, right? It, this is from the cloud. You know, and I, like, I come in here and I see new, new capabilities. Um, you know, I'm doing beta testing on some, some things that are kind of coming out. Um, but again, you know, this isn't the way this is going to, to kind of the experience is going to be. They're going to add on more to the experience as time goes by. And obviously, you're a full administrator for this site, for the Business Transformation Center, HPE hardware in there. Um, I'm assuming there's control over what people have access to. So if I'm in a larger organization, I might give uh, an administrator access to a certain site. Other people may see compute and uh, inter you know, across multiple sites. Uh, same same with storage. I'm I'm assuming I've got some level of access control. Absolutely, any type of enterprise management software capabilities or solutions need to have that capability. But in addition, what do we expect out of the cloud? Tagging. So you have the ability to be able to tag certain things with different different uh, words or keywords or things like that. So if I'm all into the, the cloud concept, I could deploy my enterprise, manage it through here, maybe even pay for it in that consumption model, or I can look at this as a extension, a management extension to give my corporate level or my high level admins visibility across my enterprise. But still, if I really wanted to think about running those sites more or less, you know, in the traditional data center model. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the value of this is, is I think people are starting to realize what works in the cloud and what doesn't work in the cloud. And you brought up a few things, but the realistic nature of it is, is everybody has different reasons why they want to keep something on for why something in the cloud. And this brings the best of both worlds. And this really puts them on a roadmap, roadmap that if they want to move fully cloud later or move between sites, they've got a lot more flexibility now once they're onto the platform. I would say we live in a hybrid IT environment. You know, when cloud first came out, everybody's like, everything's going to go to the cloud. But we realized that isn't happening today, and, and we are truly in a hybrid IT environment. And this allows us to have that type of environment holistically across the infrastructure. Oh, it does sound like a real game changer, John. Thank you very much for your time today. Absolutely.